Okay, so today we'll start with polymorphism. Polymorphism uh, is like one of the pillar of object-oriented programming. So what polymorphism does, again, it's kind of an extension. As you can see, it's the same PowerPoint slides from chapter nine, and I will be using the PowerPoint slide. Usually I'm not a PowerPoint slide person, but uh, the concept is so uh, detailed and explained, so um, explained very well in these, in these PowerPoint slides. So I'll be using the visuals, uh, which it shows over here, step-by-step -step procedure, how, the, how things work. Okay, so then we will do uh, and move on to our documents in our maybe next week uh, in our next video or maybe next lectures. Okay, so let's try to understand what polymorphism does. What's the task? It's kind of an extension to inheritance. So whatever you have learned in inheritance, like as I have. As I have explained, like the uh, before jumping or watching this uh, le lecture, you need to watch all the videos on inheritance. So, what inheritance does? Do you want me to do a quick review of inheritance? Let's do a quick review so that we know uh, what's going on with the uh, inheritance. We will do a really quick re uh, review. So, we did learn about the software crisis, like how bigger projects, bigger uh, software projects are working, what are their issues, common issues, and how they work. So, all these softwares. Uh, whenever we create for a company, whether it's a um, company for a hospital or a college or any other, um, or just a law firm or any company, any small, even a small company, you have set of rules, you have set of regulations, you have number of hours, vacation benefits, it vary uh, employee to employee. So every company have different level of employees. If you take an example of college, you have president, vice president, full-time faculty, part-time faculty, staff, uh, secretaries, uh, administration. So they all have different salaries. They all have different benefits. They, do, they all have different working hours. So every, every small business, they do have the same thing. So when we are creating a software for a company, uh, even just, for example, a software just to um, take the data, uh, have vacations, and just to keep track of it, you need all the classes. So you need to identify how many classes or uh, manual you need to you need to print. So if you have a full-time faculty, part-time faculty, staff, uh, deans, um, a web president, vice president, each one of us will have a separate class. After creating separate classes, it's like, it's like a hierarchical relationship. So all of us are employee. So if there's a journal category, there is the journal category will be that we are all employee of Highland College, right? So they have, and Highland College employees have some set of rules assigned that you need to work 40 hours per week. This is the salary every employer making. Uh, this is the uh, two weeks of paid vacation, which everyone will get. Maybe um, president and vice president have a different form for leave. We have different forms. Part-time have different forms. Uh, they are not bound for advising like different set of rules according to the company and requirements. So we create a journal employee class where we set all this journal rules that every what everyone is getting. But later on, maybe um, full-time faculties have uh, different sick leaves as compared to deans. Then we have, they have different number of uh, vacation days. They have different salaries. So you will create separate classes where you will be adding their specialities. Maybe, maybe full-time faculties have some advising hours, which rest of the employees don't have. With that, will go in their, uh, in their class. So the concept of inheritance comes with the super, uh, super class. It's like this inheritance, the extend keyword will be creating the parent-child relationship. So in what inheritance does that in, instead of rewriting number of hours I work only, I'm making a minor change in my class that uh, we have as a full-time faculty, we have more advising hours. So I will extend uh, the employee class of my um, for journal employee, and then all the classes are automatically part of this uh, new secretary class or marketer class or um, full-time faculty, if you take an example of college. 
according to that. So what this extent, and then you just make a change or add new methods. This is one thing about inheritance. Like you just use extend keyword and all the code or everything in that parent class is automatically copied into this child class. Now, as you did extend, now secretary becomes the child of employee. And what this parent-child relationship, why we are calling it, we will see in polymorphism more in more detail, in more explanatory way. Um, then we have like lawyers, there were some changes in the lawyer. Maybe lawyers are saying, no, we have to, we are making more money. We are using a different form. We are doing something different. There's some other classes. Then you just, in, you just go in that class and you rewrite the method. Make sure the same data type and same method name and you can change the return and all the description inside. So this is called method overriding and there is no science behind it. You just go in that class and you just write that method, rewrite that method with different values uh, you want. That's simple, like method overriding. No, no import, no, uh, no telling into your employee class, nothing, no extra lines. You're just rewriting the same method in the employee class. This was the concept of method overriding. Then we saw the concept of, uh, I think we saw the concept of super keyword. So super keyword is super represents the parent class. So what we did was everyone was giving a raise. So maybe after five years, 10 years, that company want you to make some changes. And you're like, okay, I don't remember anything. So because whatever the code, even if you just pass this quarter, and if you go to uh, UWT and they ask you, like, do you remember that what you did in the polymorphism exercise 2.5, like something like that. And you're like, no, I don't remember. It's just one quarter and you don't remember the code you have written. So what you are expecting that after five years, how would you recognize your code? And the things change in five years, you get more professional, you learn some more professional techniques. So that's where like you need a reference. That's why we have like the comment section as well and stuff like that. So when there is a change in the company, 10,000 due to inflation and the base employee salary is 50,000 and read there were some other people who were making different, if, if you take an example of college, president, vice president, they are making different as compared to full-time faculty and part-time faculties, right? So there is a, diff, all they have like different salaries. Now what you have to do is like, because of that one change, you have to go in each and every class and to make a change. So if you go in 50,000, if you make a just change in the employee, because there is just, for example, a bonus was announced, right? A bonus was announced and 10,000 and the amount is same, 10,000 for everyone. So the base employee salaries increase. Rest of the changes, like uh, whoever was making some extra money, they're seen, it's not affected. You need to manually go in every class and make a change and do the calculation as well. Sometimes it's not it's not that simple salary that's like a bunch of, and if you have seen your paycheck, you know the details that there are some other details, tax, medical, retirement, all these deductions, and then you get your whatever the amount is. So that's where we are stuck. We don't have to manually go in each and every class because I don't remember how many classes were there, how many changes I have made. And one mistake will make a big difference, right? Maybe there are uh, there are 100 full-time faculties and I forgot to update their salary. And now like they're all screaming at me. They're all fighting like what's why our salary wasn't changed in the system. So that's why we have super keywords. So if you're making a change into subclasses, like the child classes, you use super keyword. And so that if you make a change in your journal employee class, it uh, automatically affected with the uh, super keyword that get the salary, whatever the journal employees are making and add 5,000 extra because I am making extra. So uh, these were the improved classes. Then we saw the concept of constructors. Um, then if you are creating a constructor in your employee class because you were had the default constructor, but if you're creating um, a, a parameterized constructor, like you are asking for a value, then rest of your uh, subclasses also need a constructor. They also need, and if you, if you don't want lawyer or marketer or anything to have separate 
um, values, you can just call the super keyword. It will automatically, whenever you're creating a lawyer class, it will automatically ask for uh, the same constructor value. You don't need to rewrite those uh, things in the super. So you just create a, a constructor and then what this constructor does, you just pass it to your using super, you pass it to your parent, parent class. Um, I think that's it. Let's move on. This was a separate concept, class object, which you have seen the, in the video. Um, the equal concept, what this uh, equal method and object method does. Um, we have done um, the instance of method. You have already seen instance of. Um, okay, so now let's we'll start with the polymorphism. So what this polymorphism does, we have seen parent-child relationship. So ability for the same code to be used with different types of objects and behave differently with each. Don't answer anything what it says, right? Let's move on. So coding with polymorphism, what we do is, what we are trying to tell you is that if you are creating multiple classes, just like employer, lawyer, marketers, like if you see they're they are using the same example. So if you are creating an object, employee add equals to, you can say new lawyer, you can say new marketer, you can say new um, secretary. So if I call ED, dot get salary this will giving this one is giving me the salary of the lawyer if i say ed dot get vacation form it's giving me uh, the vacation form of the lawyer so this variable is as you can say it's a variable it's where this variable is part of the employee class but it's acting as a lawyer so if there are overridden methods um, in your lawyer class, this will take that lawyer class from uh, methods from that lawyer class. So if I ask ed.get me number of hours or anything else, it will get it from the employee class. Uh, so you can pass any subtype. This is the easiest way of writing. As you can see, uh, you can say uh, if you're writing a static method, and you're printing the information for different objects, lawyer, Lisa, secretary, oops, uh, marketer, and all different objects are created. So instead of writing uh, get salary, get vacation days, and get vacation form for separately for each of the object, you can just create a static method. And that static method, so if but this static method will accept. So it, it will, instead of writing that it will only accept lawyer, it will be bound to only accept the lawyers. It will not accept secretary, then it will not accept marketers. We have the journal employee class. So if you write that I'm accepting all the employee objects, so it will say lawyer are also part of the employee class. They say, yes, we are also employee. Secretaries are also employees. Marketers are also employed. But when you're printing something, that EMP, like whatever the variable is this, print the salary, vacation form, days, so as you can see, the output varies. So this is acting differently for every different object. This is what we call the polymorphism concept. Uh, and another way of doing polymorphism or printing a shorter way is which you have seen, I think, in the previous class as well, that you can just create an array of the employee. And then you can write all the objects um, you have, all the child classes you have inside the array. And then when you run a loop and you say print salary or vacation form one by one on E of I, like E is your, this is the concept from, this is array is same as Java one array, which you have learned. So you create an array of employee and write all the uh, subclasses, whatever you want. Maybe you're like, I just only need lawyer and secretary. You don't have to write marketer and legal secretary. You run the loop, wherever you have an array, you always have a for loop to go till the end. So it will go step by step. First, it will evaluate values for lawyer, then secretary, then marketer, and then legal secretaries. And as you can see, the output for all of these objects are different um, related to what these values or objects hold. Any questions till now, use the chat. If you're lost, do, do let me know. The concept is very complicated. You need to follow me on every step, okay? So what polymorphism problem will look like? So these type of questions, the practice questions we will do is from UW of Seattle. Um, and it's these questions are must, usually must in your final exam. 
So not in this final exam as your final will be online, but when you have a face-to-face -face final, uh, these questions are must. And if even if you don't have right now, uh, practice, 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 and try to um, excel in these type of questions because no matter what, if you're not doing it in the final exam or not practicing or like it's not required, uh, when you transfer, in need of Seattle or Tacoma, if you're planning to transfer those students who already took Java 1 and Java 2 at UW Seattle, they have already practiced these questions. So they know uh, how to solve it. So if you don't know, or if you have not practiced polymorphism, you will struggle a lot because this will clear up some most of the concept about inheritance. What this question looks like is we have four to five different classes with inheritance relationship. It's like the parent-child relationship. You will create the radical picture. You will see like what's going on. Then a client program, there will be a um, client program. What's a client program? A program with uh, the main method. That's the client program. Methods on objects of each class, just like this one. This is your client program. So it will be an array or maybe calling objects, running the code, depends. So this is the client program. You must read the code and determine the client's output. So we will go and we, according to the relationship we have, we will tell what will be the output. So it says, we always put such questions on our final exam. I always used to put this question in our final exam, but um, this time uh, with the online section, it's hard to put those questions because there's on Canvas, there is no, I, I tried putting it, but it's, it's just mess up the whole thing. So you will take a look at the questions and you will see that was what I'm talking about. So, but I have the assignment set for polymorphism so that you can practice all the questions. Okay, so let's take a look what we have. We have, you need to follow me on this step-by-step, step. Uh, write it down, write this down. Take a picture of this code. I would not taking a picture, I would say, write it down. Write it down, write down the code. Get your pen and paper ready. Write down the code. Let me know in the chat when you're done. There's another code as well. Or take a picture if that's fast, but I highly recommend writing it down, but you can take a picture as well. Let me know when you're done so that I can move on to the next slide. We need to make sure the things we need to make sure is that what's who's the parent class, um, what are the methods in that class, then what is the bar class. Let me know in the chat when you're done, you want me to move forward. Okay, now take a picture of this code or write it down. This is your client code. This is the client code. And this is a polymorphism type of question, which I will show you how to solve, how we can solve this question. Uh, 
Okay, let me. Let me know when you're done. Let me know in the chat. Okay, so let's get started with, where's my document? Okay, can you see the document? What I have done so far is I have just written it all the uh, all that code in one document like this. And I have highlighted uh, the class names so that I know uh, where the class names are, okay? So let's follow me on this. First step, whenever you see a polymorphism question is, first step is you create a hierarchical picture, a hierarchical diagram. So how we will create a hierarchical diagram? We will write who's the parent and who's the child? What's the relationship where the arrows are so far? So first of all, Let's take a look. We have who's the parent. Take a look at your code. I don't want to do up and down like this. I'm doing up and down for myself. That's why I ask you to write your code on your side or take a picture of your side. So tell me who's the parent. Who is the parent? And then what we have? How many children, who's the children of Fu? Who's the children of Fu? Bar and Bass, okay. We have Bar and bass, and then where mumble should go. Who's the parent for mumble? This is mumble. Mumble extends Baz. You need to follow me on this uh, and write in the chat. Otherwise, I'll start calling out your names for answers. Uh, Draw text. Okay. Okay, now we will be creating the arrows. Arrow down. These are all our uh, parent child relationships. Now, after creating this, after identifying who's the parent, who's the child, now come to your client code. This is your client code. So you have an array of the parent class, just like you did for the employee class. Foo, pity equals to first, we'll start with new Baz, then bar, then mumble, and then foo. Okay, new Baz, new bar, new mumble. 
and new foo. So we will go step by step and start evaluating all the output and all the classes. So tell me, uh, let's start with, let's start with BAS. It says new BAS, int i equals to zero, i is less than pt dot length, pt is your object name, doesn't matter at all, have no rules so far. Uh, new BAS, we are on zero, new BAS is on zero index, index one, two, and three. Okay, so we are on new BAS because our i is zero. And now system dot outer print ln pt i. So what's, you will go in BAS class, go in your BAS class, do you have a two string method? You have a two string method in BAS? Yes, it says BAS. So the output will be BAS. Let me annotate and then um, the problem with annotate is that I can, if the annotate is on, I cannot do up and down. It's not letting me do up and down. So uh, let's write output here somewhere. So first output is BAS. Now, next. Method one in BAS and method two in BAS. So first of all, we'll start. Okay, so when you have, um, okay, so when you have, when you have, uh, okay. when you have BAS, so your scope, your scope is from, let's start with from foo to bas, that's your scope, if you are in bas class. So bas don't know member exist, okay? So when we go back, let's, so if you have method one and method two, now we have to look method one and method two in bas. Does the bas have method one? What will be the output? Use the chat, quickly write the output so that we move fast in this question. So we have BAS, first output. That's hard for me to write. Uh, let's do the annotate part. Um, BAS1. So it's BAS1. As you can see, there is a method one and it's simple. It says system.outerprintln BAS1. Now method two, does BAS have method two? What will be the output? Quickly use chat. That's why I ask you to have your code ready on your site so that you can see. Uh, I don't have to do the up and down. Foo two. It will be foo two because bas don't have method two, but bas have a parent foo. So bas can ask parent foo. Foo, do you have method two? So if you go back to your foo class. Foo class, foo do have method two and it prints foo two. So this is the output for your BAS object. Now, after printing all this, it says system.outerprintln, new line, and then I++, now we are talking about bar, B-A-R, bar class. Let's go back to our bar class. So these, these are the three things which we'll repeat. Um, the two string method, method one and method two, okay? so we will go to our bar class. So this is your bar class. Does your bar class have a two string method? Does your bar class have two string method? No, what will be the output then? What will be the output? Foo, uh, the output will be foo because bar don't have a two string method, but bar can always ask his parent foo, do you have a two string method? Foo says, yes, I have a two string method and I'm printing it as foo. So you will print Okay, foo. Now method one in bar, does bar have method one? What will be the output? If bar don't have method one, it will be foo one. Method two in bar, does bar have method two? What will be the output? Bar two, it's over here, it's simple. Method two bar have only method two, which is printing bar. Two, okay. I plus plus, we are done with our bar class. I plus plus, now we are on mumble. 
Mumble task. Let's move on to mumble. This is your mumble class. Now you have to identify what is the output for mumble class. Two string method in mumble. Do you, does mumble have two string method? What will be the output? Baz. Method one in mumble. Does mum, uh, mumble have method one? Mumble don't have method one. Mumble can ask Bass. Does Bass have method one? The answer will be Bass one. Method two in mumble. Does mumble have method two? Will be mumble two. Okay. I plus plus. I is now. I is now on foo. Now we are talking about the foo class. This is your foo class. Now two string method in foo. What's the two string method in foo? Foo. And it will print foo. Okay, now method one in foo. Foo one, simple, it's in front of you. You have method one, foo one. Method two in foo, foo two. Sounds easy. Any questions on this? This is your output, this whole statement, these are all your output. Any questions? It seems easy, looks easy. Any question? Say yes or no if you have any questions, no questions, at least write something. Thumbs up, thumbs down, move forward, anything. Cool, that's the spirit. I only received two or three response. We have like 12 students, 13 should be responding. Everyone should be responding. Okay, so this was your polymorphism, BAS, extend foo questions. Now we will be moving on to our another problem, which is this one. No questions, that was easy, that was simple. Now there will be some tricks. I think that's another problem. Now take a picture of this one or write it down. Write down this code. There will be, as we are moving forward, it will become a little bit difficult until we reach the major concept um, overall con major concept of that part, okay? Take a picture, write it down. Let me know in the chat when you're done.
Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, look at this code. Now we have a super keyword as well. And we have, uh, we have lamb, extend lamb. Let's take a look. Create the hierarchical chart, identify the parent child relationship. Uh, okay, so let me, this is the screen we have here. Let's share the screen. Uh, where's my document? Go. Okay. Okay. Identify the parent-child relationship. Who's the parent? Who's the parent? Ham is the parent. Who's the child for him? Lamb, it will go in, in one series block like that. So let me highlight the classes, public class spam. We have lamb, ham, and spam. How many classes do we have? Four. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let me draw the radical diagram. That's the first thing you do. So we are coming down like this in the series. Uh, we have ham. And ham extends, uh, who's lamb? After lamb, what do we have? Who's the child for lamb? Yam. Who's the child for yam? And spam. Okay. Then we have arrow down like this. Okay. Let's see what our client code looks like. So our client code says, uh, start with the lamb, ham, then spam, and then yam. So we are working on lamb. It's just a simple loop. We'll run every time your ham, uh, the array is created with the parent class. We'll go step-by-step step on every child classes. New lamb, we are working on the lamb system dot outdoor println, do string method, then method A, and then method B. So let's take a look. We are in the lamb class over here. So let me turn on lamb is over here. This is lamb. Okay, so let's start. Tell me the output. Tell me the output. The scope is from ham to lamb. We are working on the lamb class. First, tell me the two string method in lamb. Does lamb have a two string method? What will be the output? What's the output? Output is ham, yes. Lamb doesn't have a two string method. Lamb can ask ham, ham, do, do you have a two string method? Oh, let me move it over here a little bit, yeah. Ham is the output. Then method A in lamb. Does lamb have method A? This one is where the trick start. Uh, let me close a little bit so that I can show you a clear picture. Okay, now I'm okay. Tell me the output. Tell me the output. We are calling method A in lamb class. Method A in lamb class. I like the answers because they are wrong. Yes, uh, one of the students answered it correct. So take a look what we have, what will be the output? Your scope is from ham to lamb. 
Lamb is the latest one. We are working on the lamb class, right? But look at the scope. Scope till goes with the lamb. So it means if you are looking for a method which exists in this class, we will always take that method from that class. Right now, or previously, uh, we asked two string method. So lamb doesn't have the two string method. We went into ham class. Ham, it was straightforward. It printed ham. Now uh, we call method A in the lamb class. Does lamb class have method A? Nope. But it extends ham. We go in the ham class. This method A and it prints ham A. So we'll print directly ham A space because it's print, not print LN. And it calls method B. So there's a method B call. It means this method B uh, does, because we started with the lamb class, does lamb have method B? If lamb have method B, we will take that method from lamb. So the answer will be lamb B, like that. Now method B in lamb class, what will be the output? It will be simple method B in lamb. It will be a slam B. Now I plus plus I is on our second object. Which one was our second object? It's ham. So ham will be, I think, simple because ham, the simple, no. Uh, yeah, it will be simple because uh, it has all the methods. So tell me the output real quick in the chat so that we can save time and move on to the typecasting concept, uh, which I believe we will not be able to. You'll have to make it quick. So what will be the output? Two string method in ham. What's the output? Ham. Um, method A. Method A in ham. Ham A, ham B. Method B in ham, simple ham B. Any questions at any point, do let me know if you're going fast uh, because I, as long I'm receiving answers in the chat, I, I feel like that everyone is uh, going along and following me on step-by-step step and they don't have any questions, but you can always shoot the question in the direct chat. Um, I plus plus I is not spam. Let's take a look, where's the spam? Spam class is very limited. So tell me the answers. Two string method in spam. This, as we are moving forward, because it's like grandchildren right now over here. So this is going to be tricky. So spam, we are on, yeah, we are on spam. Two string method in spam. Two string method. Yeah. Method A, method A in spam. Spam doesn't have method A, we'll go to jam. Does jam have method A? This one is a little tricky, I think. So what's the output? Method A in spam, write the output in the chat. You're doing direct chat, like uh, is there a reason like you don't want to share your answer with the class? Everyone is doing a direct chat, okay. <coughs> um, we are working on method A in spam. Spam doesn't have method A, it extends yam. We go in yam class and yam says system.out.println jam a so jam a is directly printed and then space what we have is it says super uh, super dot method a so super for yam is lamb so we go in lamb class for method a does lamb class have method a go in lamb the lamb class don't have method a but lamb can ask ham for method a does ham have method a Yes, it says I do have method A and I print uh, ham A. So ham A is printed, but it also calls just method B. Which method B you will print? 
because we are in ham class the top most but our scope is still spam till spam so we will start with the spam class spam do you have method b yes or no spam do have method b and the output will be spam b this is the answer now method b in spam what will be the method b in spam Family. Do let me know if anything is confusing, anything you want me to repeat. Uh, now the last class uh, left is yam. Where is yam? This is your yam. Again, it will do the same. Two string method in yam. What will be the two string method in yam? It will be just yam, as you can see, two string method, uh, and the output will be yam. Method A in yam. Does yam have method A? Yes, and it prints yam A, and it prints, sorry, yam A, and it prints super dot A. Who's super for yam? Lamb. Does lamb have method A? No, it will go to ham. Does ham have method A? Yes, it prints ham A space, but method A of ham also calls for method B. So our scope, as we are working on the yam class, our scope is from ham to yam. So we will ask yam, yam, do you have method B? Jam do not have method B. So we will go one step back and we will ask Lamb, Lamb, do you have method B? Lamb says, yes, I do have method B and it will be Lamb B. Now, method two, uh, sorry, method B in Yam class. Does Yam have method B? Nope, it will ask Lamb. Lamb, do you have method B? It says, yes, and the answer will be Lamb Any questions so far? Anyone who is confused? Any anything which is confusing right now? Nope. Most of you are following me and writing uh, the answers in the chat. You're writing the correct answers. Good job. Um, and students who are not participating, um, are you confused? or you know the concept, you're just watching, like if you're not doing it with the hand or if you're not interacting, it will never going to help by just watching it, how your other person doing it. So always do it on the paper uh, on your side as well, okay? So no questions on this, right? We are good, we are set. You know the concept of super. If you have a super call, you know the concept. If you have a call method within a method like this, and you know the scope thing, which I, I told you, okay? So no questions on this. Say yes or no, hands up, hands down. Okay, cool, no questions. Let's stop the share. Let me share my PowerPoint slides again. Okay, so this was one problem uh, as we are a little bit difficult, a little bit complicated from the previous one. Let's move on to our casting references. So now this is a new concept which we will integrate into our polymorphism current question, the type of current questions we are doing right now. So how do you cast? Just like you were casting integer and double and floating point and character and integer, you can also type cast the object of the same uh, category. So how you can typecast, for example, you created employee ed equals to new lawyer. So when you ask, at, hey, ed, uh, how many hours of uh, hours you work, eat, uh, ed dot get hours, it will work fine. So how this thing works. So first thing is whenever you call a method, if you have a declaration like this, whenever you call a method, first is it checks that does that method exist in this class? If it says yes, 
then it will check in the lawyer class and say, okay, hey lawyer, if you have an updated version of that method, then give it to me. Because maybe lawyer have an overridden method of get hours, but, but you never know, like it, right now in this case, it's not. But lawyer, if you recall from inheritance, they have like the unique methods, which was sue, that lawyers have the ability to sue uh, the clients, right? So if I call add, dot sue, it will give me an error because Ed says that this sue dot sue method does not exist in the employee class. So I am not aware of that sue method. So to make it work, what you can do is you can type cast sue as a lawyer and say, hey, lawyer Ed dot sue. Now this will work. It will say that I am, I know that this method does not exist in the uh, employee class but this matter do exist in the lawyer class. So I can typecast this object uh, and I can print the value. The rules for typecasting uh, in this scenarios are there, uh, you cannot typecast too far down the tree. You cannot typecast if there's no sibling type typecasting, which is left to right. I will show you how it's like the hierarchical picture. Let me go back to the first slide where we have the hierarchical. this one take a look at the hierarchical picture so you can typecast secretary if you have employee um, lisa equals to new secretary marketer or lawyer you can typecast up and down so this is okay but if you have an employee e equals to new legal secretary then you cannot typecast legal secretary because that's too far down the tree if you go second step, that's too far. So the closest step is up and down. And you cannot also typecast left to right. Like there is no sibling typecasting. So let's take an example. We'll take a look at the example we have. Uh, over here. Um, Casting references, we already covered this one. So the code crashes if you cast an object too far down the tree. So what is too far down the tree? So if you says employee Eric equals to new secretary, and then you can typecast it Eric as secretary, that's fine, that's okay. But if you created uh, your typecasting Eric as legal secretary, then that's too far down the tree. You cannot typecast Eric as legal secretary because scope for Eric is from employee till secretary, that's the scope. Um, you cannot typecast, uh, you can only typecast up and down, but not sideways, no sibling typecasting. As you know, secretary, lawyers, and employee were siblings. So if you say lawyer, Linda equals to new lawyer, you cannot say Linda is typecasted as secretary because secretary and lawyer were uh, siblings. Uh, oops. Casting doesn't actually change the object's behavior, it's just the code to compile and run. So if you say employee Linda dot get vacation, it will print pink for the lawyers. So it's it doesn't change as you typecasted it with Linda, as you typecasted Linda, which is a lawyer object, you said lawyer Linda equals to new lawyer, but you typecasted Linda as employee, it will not change the concept of Linda because Linda is still the object of this lawyer class. And for lawyers, the vacation form was pink. So it will not change the behavior. The only thing is it, the only typecasting, the rule for typecasting and why we are doing typecasting is to avoid uh, any error, like in the previous case over here that we want to print the sue method, that's where you can typecast. But you cannot say that if I'm typecasting this, um, uh, this object as uh, employee, and it should remove, because this was lawyer, and it should remove the all the lawyer functionality, it will not lose its functionality or the overridden methods. So let's take a look at the example. We have like seven minutes left. Let's quickly take a look at this example. We have snow. These are the methods. We have rain, extend snow. These are the methods. Take a picture of this slide so that we can move on to our next one. We have, as we can see, snow is the parent class. We have rain, extend snow. Uh, then we have sleet, extend snow. And then we have fog, extend sleet. So uh, sleet and rain are the children for snow. And then we have fog as the children for uh, the sleet. 
So this is our client class. What happens when the following examples are execute, uh, executed? So snow variable one equals to new sleet. So let me annotate. Oops. Uh, let me draw. That's more easy. Uh, we have a snow class. We have in this and this. So we have snow. Uh, kindly take a look and tell me who were the children for snow. <coughs> uh, rain and sleet and fog extends sleet. Okay. Let me write sleet here. And fog. I'm not putting the arrows. You can assume that this, these are the children. Now let me close the annotate because it doesn't let me afterwards. Okay, now if I'm creating a variable, first of all, you need to identify, is this a correct declaration? Can I say snow variable one equals to new sleet? Can I say this line? Is that correct? Yes or no? We have, don't have enough time. I really want everyone to be real quick on this. We can do, yes, we can do snow variable one equals to new sleet. Then you're calling variable one dot method two. First thing is you need to check, does method two exist in snow? Does method two exist in snow? Yes, method two exists in snow. And then you will check does sleet have method two? Because we will go with the updated version. Does sleet have method two? Yes, it prints sleet two and super dot method one. Why you have written rain and sleet? Oh, you're, okay, so there's a late answer. Um, Okay, variable one dot method two. Variable one is from snow to sleet. Does snow have method two? Yes, we go in sleet. Does sleet have method two? Does sleet have method two? Yes, it prints sleet to super dot method two. What's super for sleet? Snow. So does snow have method two? It says snow two. Um, and then we have method three, which method three you will print? It will be sleet three. This is the output. Any questions? We have variable one dot method two. Any questions on this? Second example, snow variable two equals to new rain. So snow to rain, you said variable two dot method one. So we will check, does snow have method one? We'll go in snow, does snow have method one? No, snow does not have method one. And then what will be the output? Snow does not have method one. What will be the output? Snow does not have method one. What will be the output? Error. There will be an error. Yes, it will be an error because if that method does not exist in your parent class and you are calling it, there is an error. Example three, snow variable three equals to new rain. So snow to rain, the object declaration is correct, but your typecasting is Sleet, can you typecast variable three as sleet? What will be the output? Variable three is the object of rain. It will be an error because no sibling typecasting. So it, this will also give you an error. So the answer will be error. Uh, more questions? 
to Muslim and Okay, I think these are the solutions for the previous one. So yeah, new ring, when you're calling it, there is error because no does not have a method one. Then for the second one, there is an error because rain is not a sleet and you cannot do sibling typecasting. Okay, any questions so far on the typecasting? This is what the typecasting rules are, three different rules. And we will do polymorphism example. In our next class, there is one video posted, which I just showed you on your homepage on polymorphism. Do watch that video before coming to our next class because that video will give you an idea what examples we are about to cover. Otherwise, you will be totally lost in those questions. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. Bye-bye.